Hello and welcome to Lakeland Community College. My name is Mary Urbis. I am the curator of the exhibition, The Skull and Skeleton in Art, number seven, Folk Art to Pop Culture. It is on display now through November 5th, 2021. The gallery hours for the gallery at Lakeland are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Lakeland Community College is located in Kirtland, Ohio on right, Route 306 just off the I-90 freeway. So I hope you enjoy the, the tour that I'm giving. Um, we have over 100 artists showing 350 artworks, which is the largest skull show I've ever produced here at Lakeland. Okay, we're gonna start the gallery tour, my curator's talk, with a piece by Scott Holloway from Massachusetts. It's called The Spell, and it's acrylic oil, gold leaf on panel. The next three pieces are, is an artist that is new to the collection, Larry Yanez, who's from Arizona, and I do want to thank him for being my linguistic coach. Larry did assist me in practicing pronunciation of some of these um, Spanish terms, so thank you so much, Larry, for your help. So these are three um, serigraph silkscreen prints. The first one is called Entounces. The second is called a key Urondo, and the third one is called Otroves. In the corner, we have two ceramic lamps by Gary Devoki with the flashing lights. One is Raku on the left with the spiky hair, and the other is earthenware. In the back, and these are these are Mohawk skulls. In the back is a piece by Chris Hurdle. It's called. Pedrito, your friendly neighborhood soul snatcher. This next piece is uh, another new artist to the collection. This is Daniel Creedon. He is a surf, uh, skateboard artist. He has a company in Long Beach, California. Then we have a, the last piece on this wall is, is Tom McGallis, and this is called Skull in Field. Oh, sorry, Daniel Creedon's piece is called Skeletons, and it's painted skateboard decks. Okay, this next piece is by Ken Hetzel. It's called Emerging, and it's kind of a crazy piece because it's, you know, you've got a standing upright torso, kind of of a human with a cow's head, and actually there is a cow's skull underneath on top, which he covered up with a wooden veneer. Okay, the next piece was done by Gadi Zamir. This, he's our poster boy this year. This is called Lost for Words, and it's pyrography, fabric dye on wood. Pyrography is the art of burning wood. And he has a studio kind of in the midtown corridor of, of um, Cleveland, and he has a gallery called Negative Space. Okay, this next piece is created by Jeremy Tompkins. It's called Skull Chair. It's carved wood. And then we have a few pieces by Ralph, Raphael Valdivieso. And the first one is called El Ave. The second one is called Reflector. And then the third one on the wall is called El Coulie. And these are mixed media acrylic and ink on canvas. And then in the foreground is a piece by Gwen Waite, an assemblage and found object piece called Slingshot. And I just want you to notice how cool the, the cast shadows are on the wall. If you guys are familiar with my videos, you know that I think that the cast shadows are a gift and how cool they look when, you, when they appear. Okay, this next piece is Ana Luisa Sanchez. It's called The Shamans of the Masks, and it is mixed media. And she's created little, little masks, and she kind of made it into a, like a little diorama. Okay, the top piece, the wall piece, is done by Ger Carrie Gortz, called Rem Remains to be Seen. It's mixed media. She has a studio over at West 78th Street, and so every third Friday you can go to her studio, check out her fabric pieces, her paintings, things like that. Now this next piece I needed to just kind of share a little information on it. This is called 
The Last Dance. It's created by Tom Baldwin. This is wood. It is not stone. He is kind of like the trompe l'oeil of wood. And his, the story is, this is, it's about the red knot shorebird and how the mismanagement of the horseshoe crab and its harvesting, if we as a, a country don't get it together, this bird will go and go and st extinct. Because what happens is the horseshoe crab lays its eggs and then the bird eats the eggs and then continues on its migration to Antarctica. But what's happening is they're, they're harvesting these uh, horseshoe crabs because their blood is, is so medicinal and so valuable but what happens is when they extract the blood, then um, the crabs don't lay their eggs. And so if there's no eggs for the birds to eat, it's a vicious cycle. So he did this piece as a political piece, hoping to bring awareness to this problem that this bird could go extinct. But, and I just want to reinforce that it's always best to try and come in to see the work with your own eyes because this is one of those very specific pieces that I believe will blow you away. There's a, that little feather on the left. You just want to pick it up and look at it. But it, and again, this is all carved and painted wood. There, it is not stone. And the last piece in this room is created by Barbara Martin. It's called 0202401, which is the number of that ticket. It says, your ticket to heaven. And actually, she found that ticket on the ground, and that was, was her inspiration for this piece of artwork. This is a piece by Lisa Rushman. It is actually glass mosaic, and it's called Death and Life After Klimt. This was inspired by a painting by um, Klimt. Again, this is one of those pieces you miss the nuances unless you see it. The iridescent in the skull, the, the way she broke up the planes of the face, and she actually tinted some of the grout lines in the rest of the composition. This truly is a spectacular piece, and it's also the largest piece that Lisa has ever um, created. And it's just, it's beautiful. We've come into the inner room, so this first piece you're looking at is Sally Slaughter. It's called Octopus and Skull, Pen and Ink. Uh, this is inspired by some Zen tangle that she creates. The next to this is kind of a crazy mixed media assemblage piece by Chris Young called Ossuary Box. Chris Young has a gallery over in um, Fairview Park called Young's Art Center. And then we're coming down to some pedestal pieces. The pedestal piece on the left is a ceramic piece and mosaic by Sherry. Gian Gasparo, and it's called 3D Sugar Skull. It's clay, glass, and wood. And then the piece ab above it, the double-headed kind of Siamese twin kind of piece, is done by an artist named Solane Blackheart. And it's called Rebirth, Surviving a Narcissist. And this is mixed media. OK, I'm going to do my best on this one. This is a piece by Chris Hurdle. It's a mixed media doll. And it's called La Muerte a Viste de Lujo. Death can see you from a distance. OK, this next grouping is by artist Marcus Schaefer. The trio on the left, the vertical trio, it's see no, he no, hear no, and speak no. And these are um, acrylic paint and eucalyptus fiberboard. Then you have the trilogy of the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. That's also, again, acrylic paint and eucalyptus, eucalyptus fiberboard. Then he created two lanterns that are, are the pierced um, fiberboards, lamp number one and lamp number two. This is a carved box, and I don't know if you can see it. It's so subtle for the face, and at some point you look at it, you can't see it, and you turn it a little bit, and you can see it. So it's, it's kind of, and this is called Like Pandora. OK, next we have a piece by Natalie Catania, A Shroom Away from Enlightenment. It's acrylic ink on canvas. It actually is painted with some um, fluorescent day glow paint, but unfortunately, I don't have the right facility or the lighting to be able to show that off. And then we have this crazy piece by Billy, Billy Cribs. It's called Digi-Death Discotech. And um, it's LED with, I believe, resin skulls. 
The designs change, there's words that go through it. It's kind of mesmerizing, but it's a fun piece. Again, it's one of these pieces you need to come see it to appreciate it. And here's another piece of Natalie's called Higher Self Acrylic Ink on Canvas. This is a piece by Andy Tubbissing. It's a mixed media piece called The Future Ain't What It Used To Be. It's video and assemblage. Again, there's a looping video in here that, that Andy animated. He did the soundtrack for it, did the overdubbing. And it's crazy because he's even got commercials on it. So I'm hoping that you can come in and um, see it. I'm going to try and locate, get a video of this so that so maybe you can visit it on our website so that you can see, get the whole experience. This wall was created by George Kokar. These are all acrylic on canvas. The first one is called Dead Ink. The small one in the middle on top is entitled Hi-Hat. Below it is Devil's Haircut. And then the fourth piece of this grouping is called Dead End. And again, these are all acrylic on canvas and some are acrylic on panel. This first piece on the wall is um, by Tom Bartel. It's a ceramic piece called Two-Headed Truncate Figure. For those of you guys who've been paying attention, you know how much I love Siamese twins and conjoined twins. So this is a kind of a special piece for me. It is here on loan from River Gallery in Rocky River. So thank you, Ara, for letting me snag this piece for the exhibition. Okay, this next piece is Victor Melarano. Tur Turnery moon skull, soon moon with neon. Say that three times fast. It's mixed media with neon. I want to just point out how wonderful the cast shadows are on the wall. This is just a gift. Sometimes these just happen. I just think it kind of makes the piece even crazier. Okay, this next piece is done by Karen Sandstrom. It's Fearlandia. It's a digital painting. What's fun about this piece is just some of the things that she came up with. It's Awful House and the Centipede Museum in Insomnia Cafe. Karen has a very dark sense of humor that, that comes out in this fun um, digital piece. It's just, it's just a really fun map with all the different um, locations. It's, it's kind of re, um, reminiscent of illustrations that were, kind of, you know, children's illustrations that were done in the 30s and 40s. Okay, this next piece is another piece of Victor Melarano. It's called Moon Skull, Soon Moon on the Dark Side of the Moon. And it's mixed media. And then those of us of a certain age will recognize these lawn darts, the jarts. This is a piece by Joss Haplia. It's called Big Game and it's yard darts, resin and found objects. And again, look at those crazy shadows on the wall. That's just pretty spectacular. Okay, the next piece is done by Tim Kosovar. It's called Untitled Oil on Canvas. And Tim is a actually a um, tattoo artist who has a tattoo um, establishment in downtown Willoughby. Okay, this next piece is Ed Marthy called Spring Break. It's collage. Ed is a musician that I know. He's a keyboard player. He used to play with First Light, and now he is playing with Sam, um, Outlaws I&I. &I. And this is the first time I've been able to show his work. Actually, no, the second time. He actually had a piece accepted into the May show. Okay, and then this last piece is another piece of Shelly Jean Gaspero. It's called Sugar Skull Table. It's fired ceramic tiles, wood, wrought iron, and then she has those, like, I call them glass ingots. They're like glass little cabochons that have been grouted into the surface of the table. Okay, the next two pieces are by Jerry Shamray. These are pen and ink. The top is called Gnome Skull Number no. 3, and the one below it is Gnome Skull Number no. 2. Okay, this next piece is done by Rob Sullivan. He's a new person, artist in the collection. We've got The Night, Pompeii, August 24th, 79 AD. And besides the compelling image of the piece itself, it's an antique frame, and up on the top are some palm trees. So it's, it's fun when artists recycle old frames and give them new life with new paintings. 
This is a piece by Tracy Parsons called The Messengers. It's charcoal, graphite on paper, and it's a takeoff on those Victorian illusions where you set things up or set scenarios up and from a distance you think it looks like a skull face, but then we, when you come closer to it, you see that it's, a, it's crows on a fence on, on, and trees. And then she puts some glitter in the frame because glitter is always a good thing to add. These next three pieces are done by Mickey Gotchel, and look at all those red dots. Red dot takeover day. I, that's my favorite phone call to make to an artist is to tell them that someone purchased this, their work. And actually, a, a gentleman purchased all three of them. So the top piece was called, Hello, Is It Me You're Looking For? The piece on the bottom left is, I Can See For Miles. And the piece on the right is, Looking For Jack Sparrow. And again, these are ballpoint pen on paper. And then the last piece on this wall is um, a stained glass mosaic tabletop by Elaine Kohler. She's from Columbus, and it's called Hip, Hips and Femurs Table. Again, it's stained glass mosaic, and then it's, it's um, attached to a metal base. Okay, these are two more pieces by Elaine Kohler. The top, and these are stained glass mosaic. The top is skeleton hand gesturing the sign of the horns. And then the piece below it is called Spine, Rib Cage, and Scapula Stained Glass Mosaic. But on the left-hand side, those are actually stacked flat stones to kind of mimic the, um, the vertebrae. This oversized large painting is done by Tom McGallis, and this is called Anxious Me, and it's mixed media on canvas. And then the next piece is done by Gail Crum. It's actually a triptych and it's called She Worked Her Fingers to the Bone. It's collage and assemblage. Okay, this wall is digital photography created by Jane Kelly from North Carolina. So we're gonna work from left to right. The top piece is called Paper Death. The colorful piece below it is called Disassociative States. The large horizontal piece it's called The Sun Never Shines on Closed Doors. The piece on the right on the top is called Ghost in the Machine. And the piece underneath it is called Disassociating Skeleton Grounding. And then the mosaic table, this was done by Kelly Pontoni. And it's entitled Not Only Men Can Have Mustaches. And it's Class Mosaic and Upcycle table and she is the registrar over at Artist Archives of the Western Reserve. Okay, this, this mannequin piece with some accessories attached to it is by Cheryl Glubish Brickman, Bad Relationships Till Death Do Us Part. It is ink and watercolor on a mannequin and then, oh my gosh, these are, the illustrations on this are incredible. You've got the owl um, over the throat and then she found a sickle at a garage sale for like 50 cents and it's impaling a screaming skull so what's not to like okay this is another piece by Tracy Parsons called burden of man it's clay and mixed media and again she's got the suspended figure and she's got the little owl up there this is truly a, a quite a lovely sculpture now this next piece is done by Gail Trunick called Fortune Teller and Gail's work has just evolved and, and has just become so delightful over the years. She creates some of the pieces parts where um, she fashions them out of clay and fires them. She uses mixed media, she builds pieces, she recycles pieces, she upcycles pieces and um, I'm just quite captivated with her work. So again this one is called Fortune Teller. Okay, this is probably one of the craziest walls in the exhibition. These are five pieces by Kat Schwartz that are on the wall. These are polymer, paper clay, acrylics on wood panel. The first one is called Off Course of Curse. Second is Do You Hear What I Hear? What's Got Your Tongue? Again, this is one of those th times you need to come in and see this work. This is, I'm, these are sick. 
And I'm saying sick in a good way. The, the details that Kat has captured with the teeth, the translucent teeth, and she, the resin, the way that the, the, the saliva is dri dripping off the tongue is incredible. And then the piece that's um, on this shelf is a three-dimensional piece. It's a ceramic piece by a new artist, and his name is Mark Duvall, and this is called Chupacabra. And it's got the tongue sticking out of the mouth and the open, the open teeth, so it, and, it, and it worked well with the other pieces, the other trophies on the wall. And then we have two more pieces of cats. Um, okay, this one's Latin. Antiquorum, Latin for ancient. And then the last one is Preceptor Paramus, which is Latin for drown. Again, I apologize that I d may not have pronounced them correctly in Latin. Latin is not my second language. This is a, another new artist to the group. This is, called, this is Reiko Yucatil. She's from Iowa, and this is the first time that I've had sisters exhibit in the show. You just saw a piece before by Gwen Waite, and this is her sister, Reiko, and she's from Iowa. Now this next piece is kind of crazy. It's by Gerald Kaplan. He's from Central Pennsylvania. He says he's fascinated with ab the abnormal, the macabre, and the grotesque. I think he's captured it. He works in true to life scale, which helps to, he says, helps to open the links of engagement with the viewer. He likes to give them scraps of hauntingly familiar information. And these are life, life size. And again, look at those lovely um, cast shadows on the wall. That was a gift. And then we have two more pieces by Reiko. Um, the one on the left is called Jack Skellington. And the one on the right is called Caltrop Jack. And these are mixed media, it's ceramic, but those are shed antlers that have been attached to the top. And again, look at those crazy shadows. They almost look like large insects on the wall. This is a returning artist. This is Lisa Lurie from Colorado. The first piece is called King Bee. The second one is called Lunar Love. And the third piece is reaching out to, to new possibilities. What's cool about Lisa's pieces is she uses this holographic pen, which again, I don't know that it's gonna come out um, on the video. You've gotta see this work with your own eyes. The iridescence of the, it's almost like a holographic pen. And then that third um, horizontal piece, as you go back and forth, some of the paw prints and some of the paint on the side changes color because of this iridescent paint that she's using. Okay, here's another piece of Lisa Lurie from Colorado. It's called Tending Growth. It's mixed media. But again, she's got, she's got some kind of crazy paint on this frame. So when you go back and forth and, and go from right to left, left to right, the, the surface changes. It's, it's kind of like holographic, dichroic glass. It's, it's quite, quite dramatic. And then the piece next to it is um, an art school buddy of mine, Joe Stavik. He and I were classmates at the Cleveland Institute of Art. And this is called, it was a cre creature of myth, and this is oil on wood panel. Okay, this is a wall of textiles by a new artist to the collection, Andrew Emmel. This is embroidery. The top one is called Such a Bear. The next draw on the left is called Vampire Jaw. Then we have Gilded Tooth, which is embroidery with acrylic paint. And then the fourth piece of this ensemble is called When Death Comes Life, oh, With Death Comes Life, and again, it's embroidery. Okay, this is another mixed media piece of, of Andrew Emmel. It's called Mighty Goat. It is a goat skull with crystals mounted on a wood plaque. The last piece of Andrew Emmel's is another um, skull mounted on board. It's called Crystal Skull. It is a deer skull with crystals. Okay, here's another piece of, by Gerald Kaplan. It's called Libation. It's stoneware and resin. And again, this is kind of a crazy piece where it's, you know, he's holding the skull and, and I don't know if he's drinking the blood of, the, of his conquest, but it's kind of a crazy sculptural piece. These pieces were created for his MFA um, 
exhibition and dissertation. And actually his um, mentor was Tom Bartell, and that's the gentleman who did the two, the two red skull ceramic piece in the other room. So it's kind of cool to have the, this, the, you know, the mentor and then the artist who um, you know, consulted with him. So it's kind of nice, the, um, the, the symbiosis that's going on, There's just kind of the dynamic between the different artists. This next piece is another piece by Ken Hetzel. It's called Last Monument. It's rammed earth, wood, mixed media, and the, the rammed earth is the, the brick that he painted. And it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but this is a candle holder, and the skulls create the cross that's kind of inset underneath the um, terracotta brick. Okay, the, uh, another piece of Gerald Kaplan's. This is called Innocent. Again, this is stoneware and resin. Okay, hey, the last piece in this um, sculpture installation is done by Lynn Lofton. It's called Acrobats, and this is earthenware clay. This is Lainey Bachman from Columbus, Ohio. This is Spider Monkey acrylic on canvas. Okay, this wall organically morphed into the monkey wall because we have the piece of Lainey Bachman's on the left. The middle piece is done by the poster boy, Gadi Samir. This is called Sensory Overload. Again, pyrography, gold leaf, fabric dye on wood. Okay, this is a collaborative piece with a mother and a son. This is Delinda and Jacob Mariani. Delinda is a graduate of the Cleveland Institute of Art. She has a studio at Stella's Gallery in downtown Willoughby. It's called We're Not in Kansas Anymore, and it's vitreous enamel on copper. And obviously the left panel is Dorothy. The middle panel is those crazy flying monkeys. And then that's Toto on the right. Okay, this is a oil and oil pastel pastel on canvas by Lisa Kenyon called Vulture Goddess. We're used to seeing Lisa's um, sculptures and bronze cast sculptures, but she decided to submit something a little different this year. And then below is another um, stained glass mosaic. It's actually a desk by Elaine Kohler, and it's called Skull with Butterfly Desk. And again, there, there's some beautiful little iridescent small square tiles that are integrated into the, um, the skull and then she's incorporated the monarch butterfly which is one of the symbols for Dia de los Muertos and one of the, the, the visuals that you will see recurring in Mexican folk art. And then this next piece is Tessa LeBaron. This is acrylic on canvas called Life and Death. Tessa has a studio over its, um, in the Midtown Corridor, in, in negative space, which is where also Gadi Zamir, our poster boy, has his studio, which is in Midtown Cleveland. And then we have two pieces on the wall by Luann Bull Becker. These are mixed media pieces. The one on the left is called Relic. It's got beading. It's also got some photo collage and some, you know, applique of materials. Then there's a shadow box on the wall that's called Sky Burial. Again, mixed media and assemblage, assemblage. And then we have three sculptural pieces. The piece on the left is done by Danielle Dory, and it's called Bird Punch Bowl, and it is stoneware ceramic. The next piece is Ana Luisa Sanchez. And this is called nesting. And again, there's, there's some incredible details with the, with the figured feathers and the wood and the, the beads and all that. Again, this is one of those pieces there where the attention to detail is quite lovely. And you really do need to see, see this if you can and come in and see the work with your own eyes. And then the last piece in this grouping is done by Gwen Waite. In, it's called In My Bones, and it's found object assemblage. And again, she's the sister of Reiko Yucatil, who did those ceramic ma masks with um, the shed antler horns. Okay, the first piece we're looking at right now is Mark Simone. Uh, he's the dad of Dan Simone, who used to be my gallery assistant. You'll see a piece of Dan's work in a few minutes. So again, it's kind of fun to have multi-generations of a family exhibiting, exhibiting together in an exhibition. So this is Reliquary of Death, Mixed Media. 
And then below it is another piece by Chris Young called Remainder of the Ocean and its Oil and Ink on Metal. Okay, these next two pieces are done by an artist from Arizona called Faraday Newsome. The top one is called Unseen Drift Cloud Tile, it's terracotta, and Night Cloud Night Sky Cloud Tile, terracotta. I met Faraday in 2005 at a ceramic studio show uh, tour in, it was either Scottsdale or Phoenix in 2005. So for me to have become Facebook friends with her and then she's giving me work for my exhibition, it's talking, for me it's a huge connecting of the dots and coming full circle. And, and she's very well known in the clay world. She's one of the art, clay art royalty. So it was a very, it was a privilege and an honor for me to be able to show her work and that she, that we were able to connect again through social media. Okay, this is another piece by Luann Bull Becker. It's called Wonder Remains, Mixed Media Assemblage. And again, it's got skulls, it's got coral, it's got little bones wired up to it. Those look like little mahjong um, tiles that are carved. So again, and, and it's on weathered wood. So I appreciate the, all the little nuances and all the details that she incorporates into her compositions. Okay, this next grouping is again another, a group by Josh Haplia. He's a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate. These are sterling silver and found objects. And what's cool about these, these are pins but they, have, they come with a backing to it with a magnet so that they, when you're not wearing it, you have a place to show it so it's a piece of artwork and then when you want to take it with you and, and wear it as wearable art, you take it off the frame. So, so for the top row, from left to right, we have, and these are all death's head moth, so death's head moth unplugged. The one next to it where you can kind of see home sweet home behind it says there was an old woman and it's actually a carved stone, kind of like a carved cameo. And the one next to it is called Lost in the Wild. The middle one is superimposed over what looks like a motorcycle license plate and that's called Eyes on the Road. And the two on the bottom is the one on the left is called Death's Head Moth Golden Oldie. And the one on the right is Death's Head Moth Gone Too Soon. And again, there's this thing on the center where it's like a bingo board and there's a thing that you can spin it so you can play bingo at home. Okay, we have another piece of George Kokar. It's called Bonefish. It's acrylic on canvas. And that's on top of, the, this is an etching by Sean Crum entitled Griffin. Okay, here's another stained glass mosaic table by Elaine Kohler. This is called Corvid Skull Table. And again, it's got beautiful iridescent glass on the surface. Okay, this is a sculpture by Laura Lee Hudson. It's called Queenie Lamort's Unfortunate Subjects. It's mixed vitreous enamel wood hypodermic needles. So it's kind of a crazy piece that she's been working on. Um, again, it's a sculpture on the top, and then you've got the needles, you've got the, you know, the skulls, you've got the, the different um, coffins created by the different figured woods. Okay, this next chandelier piece is done by Cindy Kanapka. She's also a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate who, who's major was photography, but now she does upcycled, recycled pieces. This is called Time Waits for No One. Um, not quite sure what kind of skull that is. We think it might be a possum or something smaller. It might be too big for a rat. But she also um, kind of incorporated the clock faces, which you can see when you're looking up underneath it, and hence the word Time Waits for No One. Okay, this is an, uh, the piece by Dan Diane Fleisch Hughes called Skeleton Gala Runway. It's mixed media collage on paper. And again, the background, it's hard to tell, but that where that turquoise color is, it's kind of iridescent. As you walk back and forth, it does change a little bit in the, when you view it. And here's a piece by Paris Mackey. He has studio space over at Stella's Gallery in downtown Woolby. And this is called Not Perfect, But Neither Am I. And this is paper collage. This is magazine papers that have been superimposed and, and collaged onto the surface. And this is actually a door. 
So, and this is, pro this is one of the largest pieces I've ever seen of Paris's work, which is kind of fun. Okay, this, this wall is, the first piece of this wall was created by Madeline Cooper, Maddie Cooper, A Thing of Beauty. It's pen and ink. Maddie is a Lakeland Community College graduate and she currently works in our bookstore. I met her when she was just a fledgling art student years ago, so it's kind of fun to be able to start including her work in some of my exhibitions. And the piece next to it is also hers because she graduated last year and was not able to, you know, go to commencement. So that's why it says, was it, her title is, was it even worth it? Mixed media. And the wording says, I never got to wear this and now I never will, which is kind of sad. I mean, you, you see people decorating the, the tops of their mortar boards, but, you know, this is so indicative. Of, our, of the time with the, um, the mask hanging off the... Okay, these next two pieces are done by Deborah Butler. Deborah is a, also a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate. The piece on the left is, is called I Say It Only Once and it's graphic, graphite and red pencil on paper. And then the next piece is called Deborah Butler Communion Anyone and it's pastel on paper. And it's kind of crazy because um, those are like little communion wafers, which is kind of an homage to um, Catholicism. And, and then she incorporated it into an antique frame. Okay, this next piece is by Lorelei Skazenta. Her favorite dress was blue. This is assemblage and mixed media. And this is next to another piece by Tom McGallis, Man Holding Skull. This is enamel on wood. And then here's another piece of Lorelei Skazenta. Her favorite dress was green, assemblage or assemblage and mixed media on panel. Now you guys should all recognize this artist. This is Jamie Zentz. This is called Treasure, Pencil, Oil and Birch. Jamie was my assistant for a while. She helped me with my installations. And the work she does is incredible. You know, with the figures, the, what the, the, what she's able to capture and then what she does with her background because it's, it's on birch and she brings up some of the wood grain and she draws all kinds of surreal dreamlike images in the background. Okay, here's a piece by Dan Simone. Dan used to be my um, gallery assistant. You saw a piece of his dad's before. He's now, Dan is now the um, gallery manager and the website designer, uh, marketing person over at the Valley Art Center in Chagrin Falls where I used to work. So basically he has my job now. So this is called an offering of myself to myself and it's graphite on paper. Okay, this next piece is done by Anya Khan. Anya Khan is from Oregon. And this is called Death is Behind Us and this is mixed media. This is a piece by Barbara Martin. You can't take it with you. It's scratch board and collage. Barbara has a studio space over at Stella's Gallery in downtown Willoughby. And again, this is just one of those pieces where she's got the scratch board in, and just think of the technique and the mastery of the technique it took to be able to do something like that and not have it be too overwhelming and, and to capture the teeth and the, the indentation of the nostrils and the eye sockets. It's, and then she incorporates it into an antique frame. Now this is another new artist. This is Bruce Buchanan. He has a studio down at West 78th Street and it's called Skull Composition. It's stained glass vitreous paint. And I was just so grateful that he created this, this light box because I can't really show leaded glass. I, I don't have the right lighting and all that. So his, he was, he, you know, accepted my challenge to do a piece with skulls and then he also understood the limitations of the space. So he created the, the light box so it could be viewed at all times. So thank you. Here's another piece by Tracy Parsons, and this is called Metamorphosis, and it's got the, you know, the, um, the butterfly. Okay, the sculpture piece down here, this is called Hansel and Gretel, another piece by Gail Trunick, and just the expression that she's been able to capture on the, the two, you know, Hansel and Gretel, and then there's the witch, and she's got that little cup that has the little bone pieces in it. It's just, it's just been so fun to watch Gail's work evolve over the years and how she does more and more of the ceramic sculpture and then adds pieces, parts, and there's always a story, there's always a narrative to her work, which makes it so 
magical and so intriguing for me as a curator to select her work to be included. Okay, we've got three pieces by Nancy Lick. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna do my best here. The one on the left is called Ricardo, which is Spanish for memory. These are, all, these are acrylic pieces. The piece in the middle with the two girls, Thos and Huego, Thos and Huego. And then the third piece is Beisa y Muerte, Beauty and Death. Okay, here's another piece by Chris Young. Hey, look, there's a red dot, another red dot takeover. This is called Scully Fun and it is mixed media. Those are actually like linoleum tiles that she's painted and then kind of wired them together. Now this next wall is done by Laurel Herbold. This is, um, Laurel has a space in West 78th Street Studios. Right now you're looking at, um, this is a photograph of a mural that she just completed. This is at, at the Barrio Patio Mural in Strongsville, Ohio. I don't believe that the, the, this restaurant has even opened yet. So this, you're getting a sneak peek. And this is a mural that will be outside on the patio area. And then this next painting, this is an original painting, and this is called Symphony of the Soul, in which you, you know, you've got the monarchs, you've got her playing the violin, you've got the, you know, um, the swirling of the dress. And then we have two more uh, projects she worked on for Barrio. The top one is, is the Barrio Patio Mural, which is in Lakewood, Ohio. This is outside. And so these were painted on special panels, which are waterproof, and you can enjoy it when you sit out on the patio. And then underneath it, this is something, this is Monarch Barrio Party Room in Strongsville, Ohio. So this is, again, the, the party room. Uh, for the restaurant that that's, hasn't opened quite yet. And it's kind of, what's fun about this one, it's a limited color palette, it's black and white, because they felt that they didn't want to have too much distractions going on with any of the events that would be going on out inside. And I just think it's a fun concept and a fun contract, contrast to see the, the black and white. These next two mask pieces are done by Chris Hurdle. The first one on the left, is called Flores Dadati. Flores Padati, sorry. And it, they, they're both ceramic. The, the white mask is entitled Yearning. And the piece underneath it is another Zentangle inspired piece by Sally Slaughter called Inside Pen and Ink. Okay. So we're, we're starting the display case from left to right. This first piece is Zach Gorel. Gorel, it's Ofrenda Botella, it's glass. Um, Zach is actually the technical assistant over at the Cleveland Institute of Art. And now we have two pieces by Renee Tay. She's been here before, she's from California. And these are assemblage. She gets vintage dolls, vintage teacups, and paints them and, and adds all kinds of crazy details. And so obviously I picked a bunch of pieces that were devils and skulls, which is kind of a fun combination for me. And then we have a ceramic sculpture by Pam Stern. Pam is from Texas, and this is called Gather Ye Rosebuds. And what's fun about this piece is that you've got the skull on the front, but on the back is um, a figure of a, a, a face of a woman, and that's why I have the mirror tile so that you could see the other, the other um, version, the other view of this piece. And it's beautiful because it's got the, the, you know, the roses and the black and white with the red, which is one of my favorite color combinations. Then we have another teacup. This is called Devil Teacup Bath, again by Renee Tay. And then in the back is Deviled Egg. It's got a great thing with the little devil with her hands on her hips, and she's got one of those I'm annoyed faces, which is fun. And then we have this little one called Devil's Chair, again by Renee Tay. And then this last piece, this is, oh my gosh, the surface of this. This is, again, this is Zach Gorel or Gorel, Ofrenda Frasca. And what he did is he, he, blew, he blew the container, you know, it's hot glass, and then he created the skull and the, um, 
the cross on top, and then he sent it to a company in California that does the dichroic, which is a like a metallic um, element that's that's included and sprayed into the glass to give you these incredible um, iridescence, iridescent rainbows. Okay, and the second shelf, we have some we have three shot glasses, skull shooters by Gerald Kaplan, which are ceramic. And then in the foreground, we have five of, of um, Jared Gepperth's skulls, which are also ceramic. And then what he did in the background, he made these little shadow boxes with different shapes of skulls, different colors. So left to right is shelved skulls, number one. And then we have spirit stacked, number one, which is ceramic and mixed media. And then we have spirit stacked two, ceramic and mixed media. And then we have a third, which is called Shelved Skulls Two. And then we have three tumblers by Gerald Kaplan. Again, Gerald is from um, central Pennsylvania. And then on the bottom shelf, we have a combination of Gerald's work and more of uh, Jared Gepperth. Gepperth. So the three um, square pieces in the back are called Square Skull One, Two, and Three. And they are ceramic and mixed media. And then the pieces that are in the foreground are all by Gerald Kaplan. So we have um, three of the skull tumblers. We have two of the individual skulls. And then we have three ceramic shot glasses. OK, we have three pieces by Molly Johnson. These are porcelain skulls, obviously porcelain skull one, skull two, and skull three. And these are sitting atop another piece of Zentangle inspired work by Sally Slaughter called Tri Skull. Now this next group, the, the, the taller piece is actually an embroidery mixed media done by Grace Klein, La, La Calavera Asukar. And actually she just graduated from high school and she's a student down at Ohio State, so she is one of the youngest exhibitors we have in this exhibition. And then it was displayed on a found object kind of skull sculpture to hold it in place. And those are being flanked by four um, pieces by Daniel Dory, and these are called Happy Highball Set, and these are stoneware, and it's sold as a set. The next piece is done by North Carolina artist Jesse McNally. Jesse has exhibited in our show before, but it's been a few years, and we caught up again on Facebook, and I said, hey, I'm doing another skull show. Would you like to participate? And she said, sure, yes. So she, welcome back, Jesse. And this is pr called Purgatory Acrylic and Gouache on Wood. Now these next four pieces are done by an artist named Beverly Boer. And it's, these are glass mosaic. And the one on the left is called Nine Lives Expired, hence the, the cat with, the, with the, um, the wings and the skeleton. And then we have Day Into Night, which is half cat, half skelly. And then on the little shelf is The Moon Belongs to You. Again, these are all glass mosaic. And then the, th the last piece is mixed media with the, st with the glass mosaic. It's called Stella, and she's also incorporated jewelry, found objects, and also um, peacock feathers into the composition. And then this piece, this is a piece by Stephanie Miller Davis, and it is a ceramic piece. And this is Casa, Casa Espiritos, and it's got the different images of, of the skulls with wings. We've got a skull, Katrina, you have the, we have the, um, like a brother and sister skull kind of prancing around the, the perimeter of the piece. Okay, we have another piece by Lorelei Skazenta. She marches on in the name of love, and this is assemblage and mixed media. Okay, now this next grouping is, this is Mary Sanders Lazenby from South Carolina. So um, the painting in the center is called Bits of the Past. It's mixed media. And then going clockwise, starting from the bottom left, um, is Awalita, which is a paper skull mask with acry acrylic paint. The Bird Watcher, which is also a paper skull mask. We've got the Blue Beauty with a red dot, which is wonderful. Blue Beauty, which is paper mache and acrylic paint. 
You've got the queen, which is kind of crazy with the red tongue sticking out. That's also paper mache and acrylic paint. And then the last piece of the mask in this grouping is called Fantabulous, which is also paper mache and acrylic paint. And then this last piece on the wall is called Skeleton Dance Party in a Garden. And this is Diane Fleisch Hughes, mixed media collage on paper. And Diane has a studio over it at Stella's Gallery in downtown Willoughby. Okay, this is another piece by Raphael Velda Vieso, and this is called Altar and Blues, and it is wood, acrylic, and clay figures. And what's great about um, Raphael's work is so illustrative, and it tells a story. And he he does the graphics, and then then he also created the ceramic figures, which he sculpted and painted and placed inside of the the altar itself. Okay. Here's another display case filled with lovelies. The first three pieces are created by Solane Blackheart. The first is Monarch Skull Brooch, and it actually comes with a um, coffin-shaped box. Then she did earrings called Hearts of Shell Earrings, where she's got these little skulls with a, this like, kind of like a beaded um, crown. And in the back it's, is a Aztec paint pendant, Aztec Azteca pendant and it's mixed media. And then we have two we have two flanking pieces by Dan Levin from California. This is called Color Skull and it's hand cut playing card with the different layers so you can it's three dimensional and then it's put in a plastic case and then the case kind of shuts with magnets. The piece in the middle is a ceramic piece called from Daniel Dory called Kitty Treat Bowl. I don't know about you, but if I had a kitty that looked like that, I'd be giving them better treats, bigger treats, better treats than this. I don't know, that underbite coming up is just, just a little unsettling. But I love the humor that some of these artists are able to inject into their work. Then we have another, um, another uh, altered playing card deck. This is Silver Skull, hand-cut playing card by Dan Levin from California. And then we have two pieces. Um, it's a husband and wife team from Cleveland Heights. On the left is Marianne Posh, um, necklace with tourmaline, and it's sterling silver with tourmaline. And then um, the pendant in the back is done by John Goulias, and it's called necklace with skull, and it's sterling silver. Okay, on the middle shelf, we're going to do the back shelf first. We have a piece by Leslie Edwards Hume called Pumpkinhead Calavera, which is a little small sculpture. And he's kind of lost his eyeball and fell out and it's on the floor in front of him. Okay, now these next three pieces in the back, these are done by um, Laura D'Alessandro. These are 3D photo constructions. They're kind of like the old fashioned flicker pins. Uh, the one on the left is called Creature One. The one in the center is called Altered History. And the one on the right is called Creature Two. And you, it's one of those things you stand back and forth and the images change like, like a flicker pin, like when you're a little kid, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and then in front of them are three pieces by Barb Schmidt, Barb Jacob Schmidt. It's, it's, the first is a ring. It's a group thing ring. It's size 8.25, it's sterling silver. Then she has uh, a pair of earrings, TMO Damien earrings. They're sterling silver and copper, and actually the copper hands that are in, that are piercing the head, is the sign language, I think, for love, So, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. She always injects a little unusual history or a little humor into her work. And then the third piece that we're, that we're seeing is another... Um, ring and it's called crown of souls and it's sterling silver and it's a size 10. and then okay we're gonna i'm gonna be talking about these wise old crows and i we uh, we have a we had a collector who bought all seven of them and what a phone call that was to call the artist and say that that my our client our buyer purchased all seven because this 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 collector has purchased work before and she said she just needed to give him a good home. So the first three of the wise old crow from left to right is Magdalene and then we have Helga in the back and Agnes in the front. 
And then the next two pieces, um, these are kind of fun. It's a fun um, installation. These are Barb Jacob Schmitz, and these are lace, you know, lace keepers. And she figured she didn't know how she was going to uh, present them. So that's why she created these, these shoes with the laces on them so that you too, if you want, could purchase and have skull, you know, skulls on your shoes. And the first one is called, it's nice to have friends, lace keeper, and it's sterling silver with copper. And then um, next to it is put on a happy face lace keeper where it's sterling silver and, and sterling silver. And then we have the, the, three, the last three of Christina Medusa's Medusa's ornaments, Wise Old Crows. And Elsbeth is on the left. In the back is Lilith. And the front is Narcissa. And that's actually um, a stone heart. And then on the bottom, we have a bevy of carved sandstone um, skulls by John Zilko, who used to teach here at Lakeland. So we've got like, um, like 25 of these carved stones. And then in the back, we have another Christina D'Angelo um, wise old owl, and this is called Amaranth. And then in the center, we have two pieces of um, Annette Plavin. These are sugar skulls, authentic sugar skulls, and it's an orange sugar skull and um, a purple sugar skull. And in her media, she said it was made with sugar and love. Because when you create things for Dia, Dia de los Muertos, it is about remembering the past, remembering the loved ones. And they will always be in your heart and they will never be forgotten if you remember to say their name every day. Okay, this is a grandfather clock called Grandfather Time by Gadi Zamir. He did the art and design and the pyrography, but he did ask that I give a shout out to Michael with Cleveland Clock Repair in Cleveland Heights because he helped him do the, the clock part and to make the pendulum work. So it's, so it's kind of nice to have a clock in the gallery so, so I don't lose track of time, which I do on a regular basis. Okay, this is a iterated photograph by Stephen Calhoun. This is called Bone Mandala. So it's iterated photograph, UVC pigment, inkjet print to Centra. And I think Centra is just the name of the material that he's printed on. Again, this is one of those things you really, you're not really gonna understand or see the connection to the skulls until you can get right up to it. And this is kind of a mes mesmerizing hypnotic piece. So be careful don't get lured into it. You may never come out alive. Okay, we, this is the second time we've had an international artist exhibit with us. This is Frodo Mikkelsen. He's from Denmark. And so the top piece is called plate number one. It's ceramic. And the second one is called plate number two. I'm just so glad the piece got, pieces got here. These things got, were traveled all over the United States before they got here. They kind of got lost in the mail. We were a little nervous for a while, but I'm so glad that they arrived safely and they look wonderful. So thank you, Frodo, for making the effort and sending them from Denmark. Okay, these next three paintings are done by Ant Antonio Parente. These are all acrylic on canvas. And the one on the left is David Bowie. I mean, I think you can see the orange hair from, from that era of David Bowie. The middle piece is called Lucy Ricardo with her great little pin curl hair. And then I think you'll the, the um, Star Wars fans will recognize Princess Leia Organa. Again, this is acrylic on canvas. Next, we have a ceramic platter by Irene Witzka Lawson from the state of Washington. This is skull platter with Frida, and actually those are Frida de decals that are, are, that are the center of the orange flowers that kind of go around the circumference of the skull, of the sugar skull. Okay, we have a wall of Mark Yazinchak. We've got his wall skulls. He just recently started doing hearts with the skulls on them, which are really kind of cool. And then there's one there over that's on the right hand side, about three quarters down, which is kind of a cocoon skull. It's kind of like a like a skull and swaddling. So this and it's you know, and I'm grateful that he put this up on one piece of barn siding because when I did it, we did it two years ago, my assistant specifically asked, he said, please don't make me put 27 holes in the wall for these pieces. So and these are fun. I mean, each one has a different expression. It's amazing what he's able to capture with a, a, a few strokes of his incising tool to scrape away the clay to get, to get the, the faces and get those crazy smirks and crazy um, 
um, smiles on, on these creatures, these skulls. This is a busy case, so I'm just going to get to it. Okay, on the left, this is Diane Hockey from Michigan. This is called Pothead Skull Planter. Then we have a ceramic sculpture by Michael W. High. I'm sure you recognize his work. This is a beauty. It's so sublime with the, with the black clay. It's obsidian clay, which is why it's black, and it's called Obsidian King. And next to that is a wall piece called Remember Me, and this is a mixed media ceramic piece by Dan Diane Hockey. Again, she's from Michigan. And then we, now we have um, four pieces by Zach Tate who's from Michigan, and um, the piece in the back is called Toe Nut, and that's porcelain, and then the cups one, two, and three are wood-fired, and I'm hoping you can get the detail because the skull is actually on the bottom, and then the feet are little skulls, so I'm hoping that we can um, capture that. Row. The next shelf, a piece by Becky Grasser. She teaches here. She teaches IT. And this is a gum bichromate images on ceramic. And um, it's called Unknowns. And what she has done is captured images from different um, cemeteries around the world, you know, in, in honor of veterans. And, ve and Becky is also a veteran. And we, we are grateful to, for her service. Then we have three of Mark Yasinchak's blossoming skulls, one through three. These are, this is a new set of work from him where he does the blossoms and then sets them into the base. And then the piece on the, the last piece on the right is done by an anonymous artist and it's called Gray Skull and it's Raku Fired Clay. And now we're going to come to the front of the case, the front row. We have five of Mark Yazinchak's skull with stands, and these are porcelain and stain. We have three pieces by Jamie Adams. Jamie Adams is a new artist to the collection from Alabama. We have skull plate one, which is black fritware, and it's ceramic. We have a, and, and the images are kind of carved into the clay itself. Then we have a skull cup called Black Fritware Ceramic. And then we have skull plate number two, which is Terracotta Ceramic. And then we end it with five more of Mark's skulls with stands. Okay, then going from left to right, we've got a bunch of pieces by Gerald Kaplan. He's the guy from central Pennsylvania. We have um, the blue skull, single skull. We have three of his mugs. And then in the back, we have just Dustin Kaiser, and this is pyrography, which is in Death in Bloom. And in front of his piece are two more skulls of Gerald Kaplan. And then there's a big red skull of Gerald Kaplan's in the back, and then four more mugs of Gerald's. And again, he's from central Pennsylvania. And then and the skull mugs he does and the tumblers and the shot glasses are meant to be totally functional. They are usable. Okay, we have three pieces by Sharon Martin. From left to right, we have black skull plate, which is glass, ceramic, and crystal beads. And then she did a leaded glass piece called spider skull, and it's so fun how we were able to center the reflection of the skull between the other two. And again, I'm just so grateful that we were able to tr train the light on it and was able to project the way it was, the way it does. And then the third piece is called white skull plate, glass, ceramic, and crystal be beads. I do want to point out that these are commercial plates that she did upcycle and recycle into her pieces and then she set them in either um, silver lead and, or copper, copper um, leading. Okay, we have two more photos from Stephen Calhoun. Again, these are iterated mixed process fractal die print to archival paper. The top piece is you don't get to take your face with you, and the bottom piece is your mind stays behind. Okay, next we have another grouping of work from Arizona artist Larry Yanez. Uh, the top row are Raku fired ceramic. And they are Raku fired mask. And again, look at the red dots. It's so great to have all these red dots showing. So from left to right with the mask is um, just exotic. Then we have before the storm. The red, the red skull is called as is. We have adios bonita. 
and then desert rose. Now the, these next three pieces, these are um, created by Larry Yanez from Arizona. These are Udu drums, which is his interpretation of a Nigerian drum, which are made out of clay and they are created by women and only, perf only um, performed by women. So I think, thought that was kind of a, an interesting homage that he did. And these are double-sided. You could see the reflection in the back. So the one on the left is called No Questions Udu. The one in the middle is After the Intruders Leave. And the third one is called Unruly Visitor. And we, we were able to put up the mirror tile so that you could see the, back, the background of them because I didn't want to put too many heavy duty pedestals in this area and I just wanted, you know, I wanted the focus to be on the pieces. And then, and then even though it's not you know, part of the display, just those, those really nice cast shadows of the shel shelves looks kind of cool too. Okay, this is a sculpture by Michael W. High called Handmade of the Dark. It's ceramic textiles and emulsion, and he actually hand sews the, the garments of these um, sculptural pieces. And it's, these are just so fun. Again, he's another artist that I have watched evolve over the 16 years since I've been here at Lakeland because he takes classes upstairs. And just watching how he has evolved um, and grown as an artist is, has been an honor and a privilege to witness. And our last piece on this wall is another piece by Stephen Calhoun called Keepsake. And again, it's an iterated mixed process image, PD source, die print to archival paper. So, so that does it. Thank you so much for coming along for the ride, coming along for the tour. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the work. If you have any questions when you see this video, you can contact me. My name is Mary Urbis. I'm the curator of the exhibition and I'm the gallery director here at the gallery at Lakeland Community College. Thank you for coming along for the tour. I hope you learned some things. I hope I entertained you. I hope I made you laugh and I hope you were intrigued enough to hopefully, if you live nearby, to come in and stop in and see the show. And again, the gallery is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 to 5. So. Have have a great day and adios amigos.